Hey, welcome in to another Auburn Live show. I am Justin Hokinson, and we'll jump right into it today. We got a, a couple of guests today, but first up is uh, a, a guy that I have known for, gosh, um, close to a decade. Um, one of the best receivers in the history of Auburn football, uh, an absolute big play guy, an NFL receiver. Um, and really one of the best all around dudes that, that, that I, that I know, and that I had an opportunity to, to get to know during recruiting and at Auburn. Um, if you haven't guessed it, it's, uh, the one and only Sammy Coates. <laughs> Sammy, what is happening, man? Not much, not much at all, man. Happy to be back in Auburn. Yeah. So you mentioned, obviously, Sammy, you mentioned you're back in Auburn. Uh, you, you had an awesome NFL career and had some great experiences, but, a lot of people are probably wondering what you're up to. You mentioned you're back in Auburn, man. Just tell people what you got going on and how's life and, and how is it being back in Auburn, man? That's awesome. Auburn is a great place. It's built a lot more than when I was here. You know, a lot more stuff going on. I'm just happy to be back. You know, great opportunities here. I'm just going to keep every opportunity that comes away. I'm going to take advantage of, like, getting to talk to the football team, getting to hang around them guys. It's a pretty cool opportunity. I'm just doing more in the community. So you're a police officer now. In the process. In the process. Well, yeah. I mean, what in the world led you to that, man? That is a, a, a noble thing, dude. How'd you get into that? Um, I want to do more, not just be a police officer. I'm just doing that, you know, just get my feet wet. But I want to go to FBI or CIA agent or Secret Service eventually after like three years. So it's just a stepping stone to get to where I really want to go. That's awesome, man. That is awesome. Um, so you're back in Auburn enjoying life. Um, yeah, you mentioned it's, it's changed a lot. I mean, obviously what, what, what are some of the big differences, um, between when you were, um, when you were here and, and, and the way it is now? Um, just more buildings, more, it's so much going on, a lot more stuff happening. It's just it's way more people than when I was here. So it's just like crazy how fast it grew within like six years, six, five years. Yeah, no, that you're not, there's no kid, man. I guess I've been here for a little over a decade now, and it is, um, man, it is it's blown up. It's blown up a ton. Um, it's a it's a it's a crazy place, man. Hey, so before we get into, you know, kind of what your impressions are of the program now, um, let's go back to when you were at Auburn. Um, what do you remember from your time here? You know, you had kind of a, a wild ride. I mean, you were there in twelve, yeah. right? And then yeah. you're in 13. I mean, you're, you were there in the big, and, and I can't imagine a bigger turnaround in the history of Auburn football and the history of college football than what happened from 12 to 13 um, at, at Auburn uh, for people that, that maybe weren't as in tune during that time period, almost 10 years ago. Wow. Um, yeah. Talk to people about 2012 and 2013, like what was 12 like and how did 13 happen the next year? So my whole career at Auburn was like a roller coaster, you know. Um, it was like 2011, I broke my foot. 2012, we only won three games to go into a national championship in 2013. It was like one of the craziest things ever in football. If if it was a book about us that them four years of college, it would be a bestseller. <laughs> it, it was so many different moments that everything you can imagine, your emotion wise or feeling as a person slash player, you went through it through those three years. Like, no way. There was no way around it. 2012 was, like, crazy. We had four or five different quarterbacks, new coach. Kids that get fired at the end of that year, it just, like – then we bring in Leffler as the off. It was so much going on that it was insane. It was just one of those things that is what it wasn't no preparing for it, if, I, if that's the right way to say it. Then 2013 happens, and, you know, we start winning games. Then we have that – we lose the LSU. Then we turn around and beat Texas A&M. I think Texas A&M was the turnaround moment for us. Like, oh, yeah, we really got a chance. Like, because Texas A&M was a team to beat, and we beat them. Like, I guess we kind of felt like that was our test to say we can really go to the national championship. So that season was kind of crazy, too. We lost key players at the beginning. Then we kept winning, kept winning. Then the Georgia game happened. Now, the Georgia game was like one of the things, it's meant for us to win this year. It's, just, it's meant for us to win this year. It's no other question. After that catch, after Rick made that catch, it meant for us to win this season. So we get to the Iron Bowl. 
this game is insane. It's probably one of the most intense game I've played in, 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 in level of football. Any level, it's the most intense game. It was touchdown, back-to-back touchdowns, back-to-back big plays. It was just so, – it was never a down moment in that game. Like, it was never a dull moment. No, I don't think nobody sat down that whole game. Like, I think the crowd was up the whole game. It was never, like, a, a quiet moment. You get to the end of that game, and we have it. So we feel like this game is a national championship. Who will win this? Most likely going to the national championship. That was a that was a when we came into this game as a mindset. Yep. We get to the end of that game, and this is our, our game. Is, this game is determined by a kick. He make it, we go home. Like we 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 don't we don't like go to the national championship. He miss it, we got another chance. Instead of either one, we get a touchdown, but no time on the clock. It's like, yes, it's definitely meant for us to go to the national championship. It's like it's nothing's gonna stop us now. Like. The SEC championship we win that that was not even like a I don't feel like it was a competition game we really just went out there more talented than Missouri that's what I felt we had more horsepower but the national championship game then you get another roller coaster we lose the national championship game after we had all this crazy stuff happen the whole season it was like my whole career was just like for you know what to expect it was like always something surprising it was just one of those things it's a big turnaround from three and nine to freaking get by going undefeated and winning a national championship. It's, it ain't no preparing for that. It's like probably would never happen again. Yeah. It, I mean, I, I was, obviously I was covering the team then and, and it was, um, I mean, it's incredible. I was at the Texas A&M game. Um, I was actually in the end zone that you scored your touchdown on. I remember, I remember taking pictures. You were running right at me. And I remember that little screen pass that you absolutely housed um, uh, in that, in that game. That was an incredible game. Um, that really, really was. And you're right. I think that was that was the turning point. Second half against LSU, I think you guys found something. I think there's yeah, some confidence that came from that second half. I think we went into that game a little hot. You know, we didn't come in playing like we did when we finished that LSU game. But once we – after that second half, we got, like, everything rolling. It was like we knew then, like, we can beat anybody. Because we should have came back in and won that game. Yeah, there were opportunities, even that LSU game. But that A&M game, you win that game. And like you said, you go on, you, you, you have a big lead against Georgia that gets away. You know, a lot of people forget yep. that. They, they think yep. about the Ricardo Lewis play. And a lot of people like to say how lucky Auburn was. It's like, well, Auburn, Auburn had a big lead in that game. Yeah, we did. Up. Yeah, um, that's what it was. We let it up. Yeah, you shouldn't have given up. And then, of course, you're right. The, the, the Alabama game was, was an incredible game. You know, I mean, you all you, went up early. Um, you know, Bama comes back and, and, and I remember that they hit like a 99 yard touchdown bomb to Omari Cooper. It was just yep. a shocker. Yep. Um, and then of course the, the, the pass to you with a, with a minute or two left, it was a yep. great play that tied it up and that game was, is incredible. But how do you, how do you describe the mindset change from, from 12 to 13? Because man, at the end of 12, I mean, let's just be real, like a and a and M came into Auburn and it was an it was a beatdown in Georgia. Yes. And Alabama, like those were absolute it, beatdowns, and to go from that with just a new staff and to switch it over and do what you did in thirteen, like what do you attribute that to? I mean, how does that happen in a year? Is it no, just- I would say I would say players and familiar like being familiar with Malzahn coming back and knowing who we got coming back. You know, and football is all about. You know, knowing everybody around you, knowing your coaching staff and knowing like their environment. It's just we knew what kind of environment he brought because right before he left, we went nine and four with the same team that when he came back to. So it wasn't like we had a terrible team of back back team. It was just like chemistry was missing. Like we had a change. Coach Chizik was going through what he was going through. We got a new offensive coordinator where everybody was like, it was just so many misses pieces that we couldn't fit the right thing. Then Malzahn came and he brought in Nick Marshall. Nick Marshall was a, a good leader on and off the field. Like when it came to practice, like practicing in the summertime, Nick was always in there throwing to us. It was like we built the team, built a winning team. It was like Malzahn was back. That's good. We we know Malzahn. But when the players start being together, when we start doing things together, we're going to eat together. We like we kind of built a winning team, you know, because nobody was an individual. We didn't have nobody thinking about the league because at that time we knew we didn't have nobody after going two and th- two and nine. Like, Who's looking at the players? The same players, you know. So um, we just came together and started having fun together, started hanging out more, started talking about football more, started practicing more together. It was just like one of those things. We built a great team, like within the team, like with the players. And I think that what helped us to go 
uh, on that run we did because chemistry and being on the same page as the guy next to you in football is 100% the only way to win. And I, we built that. Yeah, no, there's no question. And then, so 13 happens. What's the locker room like um, at the end of that Florida State game? After that game, you get in the locker room. I mean, just – Take how, how how tough how tough was that? What was what was that locker room like? I'm sure nobody in there probably had been through something like what happened in the last minute of that game. You know, we 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 was very you know destroyed because the way we lost, and I think that kind of affected our next year because you, if you think about the way we lost, it was like we gave the game to them, like they didn't actually win, so that affected you mentally. I don't care what kind of player you are, who you are, it kind of draws with you because. When you look at all the plays that we gave them, the fake punt on fourth and six, um, mm-hmm. the kickoff return for a touchdown, like those, those plays lost us the game. Like it was just misunderstood, missed stuff. And it just, when you witness that happen as a player and knowing that we should have won that game, it, it, it hits you harder after you lose, you know? And it's just, we was described. Yeah, that was a tough one. I, I was there. Um... And, uh, man, I was in that end zone when Trey Mason scores that touchdown. There's like a minute 20 left. And, um, man, uh, the way that thing ended was was crazy. But what an unbelievable season. And like you said, 14 was a good seat. Yeah, I remember that Ole Miss game in 2014, a great game, and, and uh, that went down to the wire that, that you guys won in Oxford. And yep. had some tough losses to end that year. But, but before we move on to this team, one more game I want to talk to you about is the Iron Bowl in 2014. One of the one of the crazier games too that really gets forgotten, I feel like, in some of the recent Iron Bowls because you had thirteen that was wild and you had seventeen and nineteen. Like there's been some ones, but fourteen um, kind of gets overlooked sometimes. And that game was insane. It was like I think it was the most points in an Iron Bowl ever, and you yeah. had like two hundred yards receiving. What what in the world was that game like to be involved with? It was like 55, 40, 55, 44, 48, something crazy. Yeah, like that. It, it was like ten point game. Um, that game, I would say. We went in just we wanted to prove a point that like we were still a great team. You know, we had a few hiccup games that that season. You know, the Texas A&M game we should have won. Yeah. We had a fumble on the one yard line. Um, the LSU game. You know, it was just like little stuff that that knew we were still good, but it was just I don't think we had the same chemistry. You know, we missing some guys, key players. Big Greg left that year. Trey Mason. Mm-hmm. If them guys come back, I think we go back to the net. Them key pieces to our offense, our whole team. You know, and um. I think D4 had just left. We lost a lot of key players, and we had a lot of guys that would have had to step up that next year with those young guys, you know. That's why they went on to the SEC championship after them young guys got older. It's like you just had young guys that wasn't ready to play yet. Then we get to that Iron Bowl. It's like, let's just go out here and just win. So we went out there and tried our best to win that game. It was just, you know, a shootout. Whoever had the ball last, whoever, you know, it was like one of those games where who won it the most and – they they just end up having more big plays than we did that game at the end. Yeah, I remember that. If 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 it was just field goals, man. I'm early in the yep. game, we couldn't missed, punch like it two. in, and nope. and it was like three. I think Auburn had to kick three field goals early in that game. Then you mm-hmm. started scoring touchdowns. I remember the double pass to you right before halftime, and yep. um, or the reverse pass. I can't remember who threw that, but um, if we yeah. score on that drive, we win. I think we will win that game. After that, we didn't score. We had to kick a field goal before half. If we yeah. score right there. On that, we, we probably win the game. It changed it going into halftime. Yeah, it really did. But man, you had a you had a monster game in that one. Um, all right, so uh, amazing stuff. Um, you're back in Auburn, and you have been around um, this new staff a little bit. You've been up to the uh, the complex a little bit. Met some of the coaches. Met some of the players. Uh, saw the video that Auburn football put out um, of you speaking to the team. It was really really awesome. Um, just kind of talk about your vibes a little bit and, and what it was like um, meeting Coach Harson, kind of what you think about him and sort of what your message was when you went, went up there and, and spoke to the team not too long ago. You know, just been around those guys. I can tell they bought into what Coach Harson got to say. I can see them coming together as a team a lot more. You know, when I first started coming up there into towards the end, like right now, you can see the change of what Coach Harson came in and did. With those guys, you know, when you get a new coach, you know, you got you to get guys on the same page. You got to get guys that want to play for you. And I think Coach Harson did that. He got the guys wanting to play for him. Um, he developed great team team activities along the way, and that helps build team like chemistry. You need to ask a new coach. You need the team to be on the same page. You don't need individuals in football. 
So I think he brought the team close together, and I think that's a big thing he did. Um, I still think he's still he's still learning about the SEC. SEC is one of the, one of the most competitive things when it comes to recruiting, and I think he's still catching on to that. But once he get get used to everything, I think he's going to be a phenomenal coach in the SEC. He's a very smart guy. He talks with passion. He believes in it, and the players believe his passion. The way he coaches, you know, the way he walks around makes you want to play for him. You know, you get in with the workouts. He does, does stuff to make players like, hey, this guy working with me? Well, I'm going to work for him, you know? And um, I can tell that on the way when I went to go talk to him, you know, it was just about, you know, life and enjoying his process, you know, not not missing on his opportunity of being at Auburn University, man, because – it's a great blessing. It's it's a great opportunity, you know. You take advantage of. It. You make some good friends. You make a, you make memories that nobody can take from you in that building. And, I, and that's what I talk to him about. It. Enjoy this process. Don't let this process pass by because you caught into all the other hype and the, the money, all the new rules they got. Like that can mess your career up in college. You got to enjoy college for what it is. You know, it's the it's a time to build friendships that's gonna last a lifetime. It's it's opportunity to get a free education. Stuff like that about what to take serious and what to push out to the side. Did he talk, did coach Harson talk to you about like, cause I would imagine if, if I was a coach and had an opportunity to, you know, have former players in like you and, and Trevon Reed, who's now part of the staff, you know, he's been around, but I, you know, I would, I would probably, you know, really try to dig in with you on like, Hey, what, what was, what was Auburn like when you were here? And like, I would just try to get to know the program. Did he, did he do some of that? Did he try to talk to you about, like, get the vibe and the feel of Auburn, or did you feel like it was your opportunity to kind of tell him, here's what Auburn's about? No, I think he, I think they helped him out, I think, with that because he kept some guys that actually played here around. So that helped to have them guys on staff. And, um, you know, he just wanted us to be – he told us he, he loved that we come around because he know we know the environment. Yeah. So having us around is like a big thing for him. He loved that players come back. That's one thing I do re- respect about him. He don't have to do that. He don't have to allow us to be around, you know, but it just the respect level, that what makes Auburn great. You know, you come and you get these new coaches and they respect what we've done in the past to allow us to be a part of the future, you know. And um, I think having Zach and um, Cadillac on staff is big, you know, and that those guys was good players here, great players. Cadillac was one of the best running backs to come play this game. So he know the atmosphere. He know what it takes to get recruits. He knows. So I think that was smart of him to keep those guys. And I think it's helping him with some of the players, actually, too. Yeah, no, that's a that's a that's a great point. Um, so that was kind of his message. Hey, you're welcome. I mean, that's sort of his thing to you. Hey, you're yeah. welcome anytime. Yeah, doors open. Y'all always welcome. Um, and that was big, you know, to hear that from a guy that you know not from here, don't know the, the history as well, and don't know the culture. Like Auburn is a deep family thing. You know, they love having old players around this place, and I think he bought into that just like we bought into what respect to him and what he wishes, what he asked for us to do. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I mean, it's a huge it's a huge deal for a for a new staff for sure is to get those players and to invite them in, um, and to you know try to get to know them and 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 have those guys as allies. I mean, he wants former players. I mean, your your opinion and the, the opinions of former players mean a whole lot. And if they come and say he welcomes us and 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 we like what we see, it's a that's a big deal. Uh, it's a big yeah. deal. I, um, I know you had a chance to um, go to the scrimmage recently. I know he invited a lot of former players back um, to go to the scrimmage. Um, what was that like? What was kind of the vibe of, of what you saw? And kind of give me your impressions on what you saw from, from the team a little bit. I see good team chemistry. I've seen guys out there just doing fundamental, being smart. And that's hard to do in college football, have guys be smart, keep each other safe. And that, that's, that's my head off to Coach Harson. And that's like a hard thing to do, keep guys – make them do their job, but at the same time protect each other. And that's big in, in college football for a coach to have his players already doing that. You know, I, I walked in right before everybody got there, it started raining. The way he yeah. grabbed his players and, and told them, went and have a meeting and talked to those guys, talked to the team leaders and, you know, basically say this was going – and it took their word and it was, like, cool to see that he involved his his players into the decision made, do we – should we practice it today or should we do this? Like, And that's, like – I think a great coach right there. And I, I like seeing stuff like that. Not just not the stuff on the field, but the little stuff he do with the players and involve them. And that's big, man. That's great. You're going to have them guys respect you more and fight for you more. Anything stand out to you at the scrimmage? I mean, you're probably watching the receivers being a receiver, but what, what did you like? I mean, what, what are some things that maybe you, that, that gave you some hope? Um, I've seen some of the young receivers, you know, 
one of the young receivers really fast and really good. He made a few plays and out and he he like he he wanted to be a like a starter. Like he playing like a starter already, just watching him move around. Um, I think the defense up front looked really good. Um, secondary looked good. It's I think it's still a little work to be done, but that's part of it, you know, building that chemistry. But other other than that, they was very fundamental. They was doing everything the right way, making plays. You've seen plays being made, so that was great to see. Um Bo looked good. You know, all the quarterbacks look pretty good to me. I think Bogan, you still used to the uh, offense, you know, getting comfortable with the offensive line. And I think they're going to have a chance. And you, you, you said something uh, that there's, there's still work to be done. And, you know, every year, I guess we deal with the same thing, right? Like there's this first scrimmage of the fall and we kind of get, we kind of hear about what happens and then everybody starts well, you know, let's make a bunch of decisions or let's make a bunch of assumptions and opinions based on the first scrimmage of the fall. You, you've been involved in a bunch of those. Yeah. Like, how, what is it like the your first scrimmage of fall camp compared to game one? Like how how far can you come in the next three weeks? I mean, what do you take oh from that God. scrimmage? That one scrimmage will show you – it's going to give you the answer to – being on that game field for the first time, I don't care if it's practice or – when you go on that game field, it's a di- different atmosphere. Like I don't care if it's a practice scrimmage or a real game. That's the first time some of them guys have been in that stadium and been on that fit, like putting on pads and scrimmaging, you know, because some of them guys just came in in the summer. So you have to play a lot of factors into this. And and what's good about it, they're going to have another one in that stadium. As they learn to get comfortable and they're going to get to get in front of fans before the first game, that's that's big time. That's stuff that's going to help guys loosen up and lose that nerves. Now, the first scrimmage tell you a lot. It helps you know what to work on, you know, like putting, having the refs out there going and Wilson moving the ball and stuff. So the first scrimmage is basically like a, a warm-up to the next scrimmage. You know, it's always like a warm-up to the next thing, the next thing. And I think the first scrimmage just gets a little jitter out, get to play around some freshmen getting used to being on the college field with college refs. It's just breaking them in. You mentioned something a few minutes ago that I thought was um, – that reminded me something. I was talking to Rob Pate, who who played at Auburn 97 to 2000 um, and really good safety, and he – he was talking about how Brian Harson has worked out with the team. And I'm sure you've seen those pictures and the videos of him running decks with the team and he's lifting with the team and um, kind of, I mean, I, I think fairly unusual for a head coach of a, especially of a major program or any program to literally be working out with the team. Um, and, and Rob mentioned like, especially as a new coach, how much, loyalty that would that would provide to him how much he would buy in if, if here he is with a new coach and they're running decks with him and they're lifting weights with him and they're sweating the coach is sitting there sweating beside me um what would that mean to you if, if if you had a coach like what does that mean for these players that are trying to get to know coach harson and here he is you know busting his butt working right next to him which is probably unusual for a lot of them like what would that mean to you if if, if you had this new coach coming in and like would that would that help get you you know build some loyalty with him? A one hundred percent. You know that shows you the like what he's he's willing to give up something to give you guys. He willing to give up his his time to stand around and watch and be a part of, it so he can feel it. He can know what's going on. We can't say uh, we know how most players say the coach. I know he ain't doing it with us. Here you go, your coach right here doing the, st- the stadiums with you, doing the stuff with you. So now you can't be lazy. You can't say he don't know how this feel, and it, it makes you work harder. You know. You can't get outdone by your coach. Now you're just building respect levels between those guys, and that's big. I think it was a smart thing to do. Yeah, it's certainly unusual for for me to see, man, if, if him doing that. Um, going back to you know your transition from 2012 to 2013, um, what would be your advice to the players now that are going through what you went through, a coaching change, and um, trying to figure it out, trying to figure out where, what my role is with the team, and what what are the expectations of this new coaching staff and you know what do they want what are they looking for uh, are there new standards like what what would what's your advice to these players when they're trying to navigate this like how did you handle it and what would you tell them now i would say what i um said earlier you know um it's football a coach's job is to prepare you it, i don't care who your coach is this is the only job he has he can't go out there and make the play for you he can't go do any of that stuff for you so at the end of the day, they still have to play football. Like, football is the name of the game. Coaching is a good way to prepare you. They do the, the homework, and you go out there and put the homework on the field, what they teach you and have you do. But, you know, when they come to going out there and playing with each other, you can't coach that. that that's built in the locker rooms. And I, I'll say that the 
the winners, like winning is built among your players. Coaches are there to supervise and make sure you're doing stuff the proper way. And um, they can go break down film and notice more than you can. It's just like they do the, the hard work with the film and the breaking down of the other teams, and you go out there and do the work. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if new head coach or if they still have Malzahn. Them guys got to play together and build a tight bond within each other so they can be able to play for each other. That's the only way you win in football. Coaching on – I hate to say it, coaches ain't ain't going to win a game for you. They, they might put you in the right scheme to win a game, but you got to go out there and actually execute those those plays, those – what they tell you. So it's on the players to win. They got to build that chemistry with each other. Then the coaches get all the credit, you know, it's, it's how football works. Yeah. That's such a great point. That's such a great point that honestly, I haven't even really thought about. I mean, um, is, is having that leadership that, that translates over, especially during a coaching change, who on this new team is going to be a leader. Who's going to hold guys accountable. Who's going to make sure that we're, we're buying into what the staff wants to do. Um, that's such a good point. Who were some of those guys back in from 12 to 13? Like take people back or who were maybe some of the guys or maybe, or maybe what were some of the moments that you remember, like it clicking, like the team buying in? I, I think it was, you no, know, we had a collective of guys, man. And I said, I'm not trying to say we just had the best team and all this. We had a, a good group of guys, like the DBs hung with DBs, like, them guys that do nothing without like each other. They was always together. The offensive line was always together. Like it was like they built them that team, and then the offense was always around together. It's like we were just so close as a team, or like all the way around. That I just it was hard to pick out an individual guy. You know, you just yeah. you just how it was. You know, we were so close. Like we com- had competition with each other. Like we pushed each other to be great as one. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, absolutely. I think that's a great point. I think I think next time we have an opportunity to to talk to Harson, I may ask him that question um, because it's 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 such a it's such a valid point, man. Coaches can you're exactly right. Coaches put you in the position, and then past that, it's it's on you. And especially in terms of leadership and the locker room and holding people accountable, um, you know, ultimately ultimately, it's it's on the individual and it's on it's on the leadership of the team. You're you're exactly right. Um, Let's let's get out of here with this last question. Um, as as a former Auburn player, as as somebody that, that loves the university, that that loves the city, what do you want to see? Because I think everybody's sort of answer to this is different. Like everybody that likes loves Auburn football wants to see some, you know, has maybe a different answer. But what do you want to see from a Brian Harson program as a as a lover of Auburn football in the program? Like what do you want to see him bring to the program? I'll give you an example for me, you know, what, what I thought Malzahn was missing was consistency. It was just, and I think that's kind of the struggle with a lot of fans. It was just kind of 13, 14, and then 15, 16, and then 17. And then it just was up and down. And I, I, that I would want to see consistency. But like, what do you want to see Brian Harson bring to the program? What do you want the program to look like? I want to see a program of growth. Like, you know, you, it, it's been many great coaches here, you know, but it was never growth on a consistent basis. Like one year we might have a top recruit class, next year we might be in the middle class. Like it's like growth man, you growing continually every year. One year you you be number one, but you consistently growing to say at number one. Like we it's too much. I don't care what what time I was at Auburn, we never had a consistent base of the same great caliber caliber, caliber players coming in. Like yeah, I want to build a dynasty. I want if if, if Coach Harsh can do that, build a dynasty like what. Nick Saban do. Nick Saban built the dynasty. Nobody's least expecting Nick Saban not to be in the top five every year recruits. Ain't nobody if you if you if a person say they don't expect him to be in the top five, they just don't know nothing about football. <laughs> you, like you, you, like he you your expectation for Nick Saban is I know he's gonna be number one or number two by the end of the season. I know he's gonna have the top recruits every year. That's like an expectation that he's hell at. Like you, you look at you think Nick Saban's sick if he like if they number five. Like yeah. you like building growth and being like being very stable with being at the top, not bouncing around, you know, one year we rank number five in the country, the next year we number 20. Like it's just too much like moving around. We I I hope hard this is what I hope for Harson is that he start a new dynasty that Auburn is at the top all the time. You know, with everything, recruits, putting players in a draft. And not just one or two players, not just a quarterback or one offensive lineman. 
five different positions, a top DB, a top running back, like this consistently at the top. Man, I know, I know a, a lot of Auburn fans would echo that and, uh, and would absolutely love um, for, that to, for that to come to fruition, man. Um, dude, awesome time catching up with you, man. Um, I, I want to have you on during the season at, at different times and kind of give your perspective. I know you'll be watching. I know well, for watching sure. The team, get, your, get, your, get your thoughts on the receivers, and I, I can't wait to, to hear what you think, man. That receiver core, man, they're, they're – uh, they're unproven. It's going to be really interesting to see who steps up, man. Yeah, you got a lot of different guys in that room, man. You ain't, you ain't really had that guy that had a breakout season. So it's going to be – it's all up in the air right now in that room. That's one thing I do like that I think they created is competition in that room. And you need that. You need that at every position. You need competition. That's what makes guys become best. So I think that what the receivers going to do is have competition with each other inside that room. Have you met Cornelius Williams? Yes. Smart guy. He, he loves football. He The players respect him. Um, I would respect him if I was a player playing with him because he played the game at a college level. He um, played the position. You know, like, he did what we are – like, he trying to get these guys to do. You know, and um, I think that's that's good that he's a, of age where guys can not just look at him as an old guy. They can kind of see eye to eye with him on some things, you know? Yeah, he was such a good player in high school and, and at Troy. Um, yeah. Such a sound player. Well, awesome to have you, man. Uh, we're going to have you back for sure. Uh, appreciate your perspective and, and your opinions, man. Glad to have you back in Auburn. Uh, one of the best dudes I know, man, and I can't wait to do it again. All right. Thanks for having me, brother. You got it, man. See you, Sammy. Yeah.